You're watching Joey's Jam Sesh. The show where I meet old people. I mean, uh, music composers. Joey, do your laundry. Mom, I'll do the laundry later. I have all this work on some guy named Frederick Chopping. Um, it's actually Frederick Chopin. Ah! Yeah. Oh, where am I? You're in my house. Why are you here? I'm here to help you with your work about Frederick Chopin. And who better than Chopin himself? Oh my god! You're the guy from the picture! Yeah. You just... You look just like him! Yeah, I know. Uh, how are you here? Well, the first thing I need to know is where and when you were born. Well, I was born on March 1st, 1810, in Zela Wola in the Duchy of Warsaw. Well, you kids nowadays call it Poland. Ah. Uh, but doesn't your baptismal certificate say you were born on February 22nd? Okay. Tell me about your family. Um, well, I grew up in a middle class and musical family. My father, Nicolas Chopin, was a French immigrant, and he worked as a bookkeeper. My mother was Telka Justinia Krzyzanowska. Why did you start playing the piano? Well, I started playing at the age of six, and I was composing my own little tunes. And by the age of seven, I wrote two polonaises, which are Polish dances. And by the age of eight, I was performing in elegant salons, and I was writing my own compositions. So what did you do about your passion of the piano? Well, my parents sent me to study music with violinist Wojciech Zieny in 1816. I quickly outdistanced my teacher musically, and my parents enrolled me in the Warsaw Conservatory of Music in 1826, where I studied music with teachers such as Wilhelm Werfel and Josef Elser. Did you stay in Poland to perform? Well, no. Actually, I moved to Vienna in November 1830. What was one of your biggest compositions that you made? Well, when I was in Stuttgart, I found out that Warsaw had been captured by Russia, and in response, I composed the Revolutionary Etude, and this is one of my most notable etudes. Oh. I also invented a musical form called the Ballad, which is a form of music usually played on the piano, and one might say it tells a story. I also made major innovations to the piano mazurka, nocturne, polonaise, sonata, waltz, Etude, Impromptu, and Prelude. So, what song made you famous? Well, my music became known outside Poland when variations for piano and orchestra on Mozart's La Cider and La Mano was published in 1830. I wrote this when I was only 17 years old. Variations on La Cider and La Mano was my first work for piano with orchestra. I had written two concerts and three other pieces with piano and the orchestra, but always remained indifferent to the orchestral elements of these works, using the orchestra as a mere accompaniment to the much more brilliant piano part. I abandoned the orchestra entirely in 1831. Interesting. What happened in Paris? Well, I moved to Paris in 1832, and I, my first concert, I played concerto in F minor and variations, and after that I quickly became a celebrity in France. I also met other artists such as Franz Liszt and Felix Mendelssohn. I was able to make a comfortable living for myself. This show is brought to you by the letter M. Because... Mm. Now for a quick word with one of Chopin's greatest companions, Franz Liszt. Thank you for being here today. No problem. So tell me, Franz, what do you think of Chopin and his work? Music was his language, the divine tongue through which he expressed a whole realm of sentiments that only the select few can appreciate. The muse of his homeland dictates his songs, and the anguished cries of Poland lend to his art a mysterious, indefinable poetry which, for all those who have truly experienced it, cannot be compared to anything else. The piano alone was not sufficient to reveal all that lies within him. In short, he is a most remarkable individual who commands our highest degree of devotion. Thanks, friends. This show is brought to you by commas. They're important sometimes. So, Frederick, could you play us something? Sure.
The piece you just heard was a section in one of Chopin's waltzes. Other famous pieces by Chopin is his Fantasy Impromptu in C sharp minor, which was composed in 1834. He dedicated it to Julian Fontana, who published the piece after Chopin was dead, even though Chopin told him not to. This impromptu concludes in an ambiguous fantasy-like ending in a quiet and mysterious way, where the left hand replays the first few notes of the Murado section theme, where the right hand continues playing 16th notes. The piece resolves and gently ends on a C-sharp minor rolled chord. Another famous piece was the Piano Santana No. 2 in B-flat minor, popularly known as the Funeral March, which was completed in 1839 at Nohant, France. The Santana comprises of four movements. The first movement features a stormy opening theme and a gently lyrical second theme. The second movement is a more relaxed central section. The third movement begins and ends with the celebrated funeral march in B flat minor, which gives the Santana its name, but it has calm interlude in D flat major. The finale contains a whirlwind of unremitting parallel octaves with unvarying tempo and dynamics, and not a single rest or chord until the final bars. Who are you married to? Well, I was never married, but I was involved in several love affairs. I began one love affair with a French novelist named Aurora Dedevant, who was six years older than me. Well, she was best known as George Sand. She had to change her name to be more masculine so her books would be published. That's weird. A girl with a guy's name? So tell me about her. Ah, uh, yes. I remember my first impression of her. What an unattractive girl a sand is. Is she even really a woman? Well, Franz Liszt introduced me to George Sand in 1837. At first, I was repulsed by the notorious cigar-smoking, trouser-wearing novelist. But we eventually formed a romantic relationship. In November of 1838, we spent three months in Majorica, where I completed 23 preludes in each of the major and minor keys. It was a cold and hard winter, and I felt terribly ill. The people of Majorica were wary of my coughing, and I was taken to Marseille, where I was diagnosed with tuberculosis. Several weeks later, my health worsened, and George took care of me and insisted that I spend five months of the year at her country home in Nohant, France, where I would file and polish my compositions of the winter. She protected and nursed me and attended to my every whim. We spent almost nine years together, but our relationship eventually ended. I never truly stopped loving George Sand, but she accused me of having a love affair with her daughter, and she claims that she never loved me. Over the next year, my health deteriorated, and I barely left home. I died from the tuberculosis on October 17, 1849, at the age of 39. After my death, I left a small envelope inserted into the back of my diary. It was embroidered with the initials G.S. for George slash Frederick, and it contained a lock of her hair. This is beautiful. I'm so sorry. I know how you feel. You do? No. Hmm. I had a dog once, though. It died. <laughs> on Joey's Jam Sesh, cancelled due to bad acting.